Diversity embraced is unity achieved. Unity achieved is power released. Power released is a world changed. Diversity embraced is unity achieved. Unity achieved is power released. Power released is a world changed. I'm thankful for the diversity we are enjoying at Jubilee Church. It's a great thing. Speaking of that, I come from a diverse family. As a matter of fact, I brought a picture of my fam. There they are. That's my family right there. Somebody said, Bishop, do you think your grandkids are beautiful? And I said, my grandkids are the most beautiful people in the world. I'm telling you. I told Crystal this morning, just leave that up there for a moment. You see the one in the middle there with the white dress? The little, not, not the little guy, that's Julius. Standing next to him is Nia. And she's six years old. And she told her mom the other day, she said, when are we going to communion? I have to read this. Crystal sent it to me this morning. I thought it was hilarious. She said, what do you mean? Crystal asked her daughter. Like, when are we going to have communion at church again? She said, yes. Crystal said, my daughter said, oh, I'm not sure. We can ask Pawpaw tonight at church. What made you think of that? And she said, because I miss those chips and that yummy juice. <laughs> she said, it's so good, mama. Those chips and that yummy juice. It's so cool that we can have chips and yummy juice during church. I love that time. Isn't that incredible? But I want you to see my family. Some of you have seen them before. Some of you have not seen them. But I just love my kids. I love my grandkids. My grandkids are at my house every weekend when I'm at home and not traveling. And it's a great time. Some of you know Wes Morgan. He had his family with my family last week. We had 13 kids in my house for five days. Yeah, we were praying for our strength. We were praying for our fortitude. We were praying for our faith. But it was a great time. How many of you love family? Amen. Family is everything. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. I love you guys very much. I believe God's going to do something great here today. I'm just filling the atmosphere out. See which way, you know, we should go this morning, what the anointing would do. I will tell you this. The anointing is here to break the yoke. There's an open heaven over this sanctuary. And God wants to demonstrate his power among us today. There are people in this building right now that have been dealing with stuff for years. That when you walk out of this building today, that trial, that crisis is going to be over. Because God is going to do in your life what only he can do. Can you say amen to that? One more time, let's praise him like it's our last time to ever be here. Bless your name, Jesus. Is it all right if we preach a little bit in this building this morning? How many of you are ready to run the devil all the way out of San Jose? How many of you are ready for God to rain his Holy Spirit down in your life? Man, I feel God in this place today. Come on, nudge your neighbor and tell him he's all in this place today. God is in this building. Amen. His Holy Spirit is in this building. The anointing is in this building. His power is in this building. His purpose is in this building. His prophetic utterance is in this building. Come on, y'all. Praise him like you know something is about to change. Something is about to shift for you. Bless your name, Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 18, please. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 18. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you whithersoever you go. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, Lord suffer me to first go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And we, when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Verse 24, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. 
And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Verse 28, And when he was come to the other side, into the country of Gennesaret, there met him two possessed of the devil, coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass that way. I'll stop reading there for the sake of time. I'm going to preach a message this morning entitled, Getting to the Other Side. Let's stay standing, please, as we pray. Father, I thank you for the anointing in this building to preach the gospel, the good news. And I pray, God, that as the word is preached in this building today, that every generational curse will be broken. Every generational spirit will be dismissed. We thank you for a dynamic demonstration of your power in each of our lives today. We humbly submit ourselves to you, and we say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. Just before you sit down, just high-five somebody one more time and tell them, get to the other side. Verse 18 says, Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. It's an interesting rendering of vocabulary in the Greek when you read this particular passage of Scripture because when Jesus utters the words, let's go to the other side, it reads like this in many translations. Let's go beyond where we are or let's go further than the place we are currently occupying. As I was praying about this message, I thought of the phrase, the other side, and we hear it all, all the time, the other side of the story, or I'll catch you on the other side, or I'll see you on the other side. And that phrase is very powerful because it packs potential. And when Jesus looks at his disciples and says, let's go to the other side, the Greek rendering is literally, let us walk through this together or let us get over to the other side. And I was thinking about the body of Christ, and I see this all over this nation, that many people are dealing with stuff that they just cannot seem to get to the other side of it. It's like they are stuck in a present circumstance, caught in a vortex or a cycle, and they're not progressing, they're not moving, they're not growing, and it's as if things are just remaining stale and stagnant and nothing's changing. And let me just submit this to you. There are some things you just going to have to get over before you get beyond. There are some things you're going to have to get over until you, before you get further than where you are. And I just noticed that too many people hold on to things from their past. They hold on to pain. They hold on to bitterness. And they hold on to things that have locked them into a place that they cannot exit. Well, I came by San Jose to tell you today that God is about to create a portal of passage for you. And you are about to leave the place where you have been. And you are about to get to the other side of this situation. And there is victory on the other side. There is promise on the other side. There is a phase of your destiny you've never seen on the other side, but you got to get over it. You got to make up in your mind that it's not going to dictate the feeling or the atmosphere of your destiny, not one more day. I need everybody in the building shout, get over it. As a matter of fact, look way down your row at the person that looks uninterested and tell them, get over it. Just go ahead and get over it. We've got to get over shattered dreams, expectations that have not been met, disappointments in other people. I tell people all the time, your highest expectation has the potential to produce your greatest disappointment. And so people disappoint us all the time. But because of what they've done, that's no excuse for you to remain where you are or like you are. Somebody shout amen right there. Amen. Say it again. Get over it. And the Bible says when he came to the other side, he came to a certain country. It was known as Gennesaret. This country was founded by the Girgashites, which were the people that Joshua drove out when he was driving out all the ites, when he was anointed in leadership. But the word Gergeshite means stranger or to be strange or a stranger is drawing near. 
As I have traveled and ministered this year in many cities, I've had more people tell me, man, there's just a strange thing going on right now. It's strange stuff happening in the body of Christ, strange stuff happening in our nation, and we see it on the news every day. Just strange events going on. And let me tell you something, in order for you to enjoy the other side, then you have to embrace the fact that you're going to have to face some strange stuff. And you're not supposed to try to run from it. You're not supposed to ignore it. You are supposed to confront it head on with the power of Jesus' name, the blood of his veins. Come on, y'all. And the counsel of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says when he got there, watch this, and, and this is interesting because the word stranger, let me just stop and pause and, and give you some more info here because this is very important. The word stranger means one who interferes with the rights of another. And you know, I really believe that behind all the depression, I was studying stats on depression. I'm just going to talk to you. One out of four women in America are on some kind of antidepressant drug. One out of four. One out of 12 adolescents in our country is on an antidepressant drug. 54% of born-again, sanctified believers that go to church admit to being depressed. This ought not be. So you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to rebuke the spirit of depression off of everybody in this building. Because depression ain't nothing but a spirit. And it's strange for a born-again believer who is sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, authorized by the name of Jesus, deputized through the Holy Ghost, to suffer from depression. You ought not have depression. You ought not be in your bedroom crying and saying, I can't get over this and this is killing me. No. And as a matter of fact, I rebuke that devil and that demon. And I tell you, your best day is not behind you. Your best day is still in front of you. God has not given you the spirit of heaviness, but he's given you a garment of praise. He has not given you the spirit of mourning, but he's given you the oil of gladness. And God is taking all the oppression and depression off of you right now. And he's about to put a garment of praise on you and you're going to feel lifted and you're going to feel light and you're going to feel powerful and you're going to walk out this building with your shoulders square, your head held high, a strut in your stride. You're going to tell your neighbor, God did something great in my life today. Everybody shout depression. You are not welcome in my life. I'll say it again. Listen to me. Strange has an intention. Strange has an intention. When strange spirits, and here's, here's where we miss it. Uh, Charlton, here's where we miss it, Dr. Can We miss it on this. We have taught people to analytically and logically process things out of their life. And we forgot to tell them that we do not war against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers in heavenly places. If we would get up behind that thing that is messing with your mind and start talking to the demon that is influencing the atmosphere, then we would see change in our lives. So I didn't come to talk to you. I came to that to talk to that devil that is trying to bring depression in your life to the point that you cannot even communicate. I feel this thing strong on me. And we got to deal with the spirit up behind this. And the Bible says that when he got there, there was two men possessed of what? Devils. Devils. Demons are real, y'all. Are y'all here over here in Jubilee? Demons are real and they influence us, listen to me, to catch learned behaviors that keep us in a cycle of defeat and depression. Oh, Lord, help us today. Open our eyes. Because let me tell you, when he got there, he rebuked those devils. Let me say something to you today. It is strange. Those strange things have an intention. When he rebuked the devils, they said, we know who you are. As I'm preaching right now, every demon in San Jose knows where you are. They know what we're doing. They said, we know who you are. And they said, do not torture us. Let us go into the pigs. When they went into the pigs, what happened? The Bible says they ran violently down the hill and drowned themselves. What did I previously say? Every strange spirit has an intention to bring you down and ultimately destroy you. The devil ain't playing with you. The devil is serious about your destruction. 
And it's time for you get, to get anointed enough to walk up in your house that when your shadow crosses the threshold of your front door, every devil on your property runs because your presence is there. So we bind every strange spirit in the name of Jesus. Every strange thing that is going on in your life that is making you feel down, that is making you want to do something destructive. That's the problem with America. And I still believe that if we would just get down on our knees and pray and bring God back to our country and deal with it like it is. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their, talk to me church, turn from their wicked ways. Give God a praise for bringing deliverance in your life right now. Amen. I was going to teach y'all, but I feel this thing on me right now. I need you to praise him like you know that God is about to drive every strange thing up out your life. It ain't normal to live strange. It ain't normal to exist in strange stuff. Come on, shout it. God, I glorify you today. Amen. You do not have to put up with it. You don't have to tolerate it. You can live in joy and victory every day of your life. I dare you to shout, stranger, you're not welcome here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to preach till I'm done. Is that all right with you? Good, because I plan on preaching till I'm finished. About two hours and a half, we'd be done. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just saying that to make these guys nervous. All right. Now watch. Jesus says, brother, let's go where? To the other side. Right? When he gets into the boat, the disciples followed him. When they followed him and launched from where they were, to get to the other side, what happened? A storm arose. Two things will always cause a storm to arise in your life. Number one, when you get a word from God. Number two, when you obey that word from God. If there's no storms going on in your life, I submit to you, you're probably not doing something right. <laughs> the old preachers used to say, if you're not running head on with the devil, that's a good sign you're walking side by side with him. <laughs> there's supposed to be storms in our life. You're going to tell me God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. And he didn't know that there's a storm on that lake. He knew what he was bringing those guys into. But let me say something to you. There is nothing that intimidates your future like you having a word from God. Whew. And the enemy will release everything in his power to make you deny that you have a thus saith God. But I came by to tell you it's too late now. You've come too far you might as well get to the other side. Why face the storm and go back to where you came from? Talk to me. If you're going to face the storm, at least let it define you. Do not let it destroy you. So what you are going through is allowed not to take you out, but to take you through. What looks like it has the power to destroy you is only God defining your purpose in you. Watch this. When he got in the boat, the Bible says, boy, I feel like, I feel the B3, the collard greens, fried chicken, all that stuff coming on me. I'm trying to resist that southern thing, but it's getting all over my spirit right now. Watch yourself, brother. That's like saying sick him to a bulldog to me. But when, when he gets on the boat and he starts to the other side, the Bible says, listen now, there arose a storm. The word there in the Greek means something began to be generated. Something was generated or it began to turn. The word generate is where you get the word generator or generations. 
Every time you start to make a move in your life through obedience from a word from God, things that have been caught up in your generations that hindered your pawpaw from becoming everything he was supposed to be and everything that stopped your daddy from becoming everything he was supposed to be gets up in your life because it starts generating its manifestations to intimidate you out of your progress. Bishop, you preaching in this building. If I had a retractable hand, I'd slap my own self behind the head. Something began to be generated. Something generating. And it rose up to resist them. Mark says it like this in Mark 4.37. The winds were contrary to the boat. Winds is breath to utter words. Contrary, where we get the word contradiction. Diction is words. Let me tell you something. The enemy will always work on you through words. Words form worlds. So every time you submit and start going with what God says, the enemy will always bring contradiction to God's diction in your life. It's to be expected. Now let me throw something on you. Watch your words. Jubilee, watch your words. Jubilee, watch your words. I'm going to say it under a prophetic anointing. Watch your words. Watch what you say. Watch what you say about other people. Watch what you repeat that you've heard. Because many times, see the enemy cannot speak words without people. You can't hear him until people repeat what the enemy is saying. If words are that powerful, then you must be careful that you do not repeat gossip. That you do not repeat backbiting. That you do not, do not repeat division. If it comes to you in word form, zip your lips. Look at the person who's bringing it to you and say, do I look like a garbage can to you? You put trash in, you're going to get trash out. So keep your trash to yourself. Talk to me, Jubilee. Contradiction. The winds were contrary to them. There arose a storm and it created winds. I'm almost done. Just give me five minutes, I'll be done. Who's going to give me five minutes? Raise your hand. Five, 10, 15, 20, 20. I'll be here for a minute. So winds were contrary, contradiction to the course of the ship. So strong. The disciples go to Jesus and say, Master, do you not care that we about to perish? Jesus arose. When did he arise? Jesus did not arise until the storm arose. He was inactive. He was asleep until a storm showed up. Sometimes we've got to have enough faith to believe. Just because his presence is with us, that's enough. Can you say amen to that? Just because he is with us, we are good. But let me promise you, if a storm does rise up to come against you, you better believe he's going to move from inactivity to activity. And he is going to speak for, talk to me. He's going to speak for you. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. And what's he do? He looked at the wind and the waves. What did he rebuke? He did not rebuke the waves. He rebuked the wind. Too many of us are trying to get water out of our boat, Ryan. And it's not the water that's the problem. It's the wind that's the problem. Because the waves have no power without the wind. Are y'all hearing me? The, the, the waves have no power without the wind. Too many of us want to deal with the symptoms, but we don't want to do with, deal with the cause. We want to handle the effect, but we never talk about the cause of the effect. 
It's not the waves that hitting you that's causing you trouble. It's the wind behind it. It's the root of the problem. You know what I'm praying for you today? Not that God will get the water out of your boat. I'm praying that the, the wind will cease blowing in your life. In Jesus' name. So when the storm arose, he arose. Now watch. When he spoke to the storm, study it in the Greek, powerful vocabulary. He taxed it. It means to censor or to fix a value, valuation. So when Jesus looked at the storm, he rebuked it. Why? Because the storm was bothering his possession. When the Lord sees you facing something, he always looks at you as his prized possession. You mean to tell me that you think that God's going to put more valuation on what you're going through than you? No. When God sees that you need faith, he will stand up and he will say, now I censor you storm because you should have never messed with what belongs to me. I said all that to say, get ready because the storm you face at your house for weeks and months, I believe in the next five days, you're going to go home and it's going to be peaceful. I want you to praise him like you really believe he's about to bring peace to your storm. I want you to praise him like you see this thing turning in your favor. Father, bless these people today. I'm telling you, God is wanting to do something right now. I feel the anointing right now. And God is looking at that storm. And he's saying, when I compare you to the worth of my children, there's no comparison. And today, you're going to cease. And my children are going to get to the other side. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. You know what I feel? A spirit of confusion has been released in this whole area. To fuse a thing is to weld it together. Confusion is the opposite of fusion. What should be unity is disharmony. What should be welded together is being separated. Mm, mm, mm. So therefore, under the anointing and auspices and authority of the Holy Ghost, I bind confusion from your mind. In the name of Jesus. God did not call you to be confused. He did not call you to walk in depression. If I'm talking to you, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. If I'm talking to you right now, if this is you. He did not call you to be down and out. He did not call you to be discouraged all the time and despondent. God called you to walk in victory. God called you to walk in power. If you're getting this word, just stand. As I'm just ministering this word, just stand because I'm telling you God's delivering you right now. And he's speaking to the storm that has come against you. And everything seems contradictory to everything you're trying to accomplish for the kingdom of God. God is saying today that confusion stops. Woo, hallelujah. I feel God in this building right now. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. When the storm arose, Jesus arose. When that thing faced you that you thought could destroy you, Jesus stood up for you. And he said, it's not going to take you out. And it's not going to begin to worship him right there while you're standing. Just worship Jesus. Just worship Jesus right there where you're standing because deliverance is all in this house. And I'm going to do something. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not, but I've got to do it. If you're standing, I need you to run down here as quickly as possible. I need you to run. Come on, real quick, because God is about to deliver you. God is about to deliver you. Just come quickly. I'm telling you. You're getting to the other side. You're getting to the other side. Right now, as you walk down here, you just move to the other side. Woo, if you could see in the spirit what I could see right now. When you made your move down here, the storm ceased in your life. You got to the other side of this condition. You got to the other side of this situation. 
this circumstance. Right, lift those hands in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are calming the storm. Not right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that you're speaking peace to the spirit, the heart, the soul of these your people. I thank you that the anointing is dropping on them right now in Jesus' name. Now, you know what? I haven't done this here in a long time, but I have to today. What time is it? I don't, I don't have a clock. Somebody tell me what time is it? What time is it? 10, 10? Wow, I went too long. I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody praying in the spirit. Somebody praying in the spirit. Oh, Ooh, Jesus. Three Kalalando Kabos. There you go, brother. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving in this altar. Three Kasata. Kilabolano Kabose. Come on, y'all. Let's pray. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. I see the Lord, what he's doing right now. If we'll just pray. If the church will just lift their voice and pray. Woo. You know what I see? The strange is leaving. The strange is leaving. The storm is calming down. You are getting to the other side. Oh, Jesus. Re kalalano kabose. Re kasata. Kalalano kabosho. Come on, y'all, let's pray. Come on, Jubilee. Three, say the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, Yes, God. 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 Come on, everybody, pray. Everyone, pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, where are the singers at? We need some worship. Come on, let's pray. Holy Ghost is moving in this altar. In the name of Jesus. There's a move of the Holy Ghost happening right now. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come on, every hand lifted. Let's worship. Every hand lifted. Move by your spirit, oh God. Move by your spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, brother. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at Bishop. No more depression. No more. No more confusion. No more. Come on. Woo! Come on, church. Praise him like you know how to praise him. Sam, like peace just hits your life. Everything's calm. Everything's good. Everything's lovely. Oh Lord, I surrender. Come on, lift those hands. Sing it. Sing it, church. Let's sing it together real, right before we go. Yes, God. Come 
Listen, just, just for a moment. There is someone in this building, and I'm, I'm, I'm about done. I know I have to hurry. But this depression has been so bad on you, and it's been so strange, that for the first time in your life, in the last three, four months, you even thought about suicide. I just want out. There you go. Anyone else, if that's you, come stand by my sister because you are not going to commit suicide. You shall live and you shall not die. And you shall declare the works of our God. Anybody else? Just come stand here right by this. Anybody else? You thought that awful thought. Man, I would just soon be dead. I don't want to deal with this no more. Thank you, dear. Come on, anyone else? Come on, brother. Come on, brother. God's delivering you right now. Come right over here, brother. Just stand right. There you go. Awesome. Anyone else? Suicide is at an all-time high in America because of depression. It's the devil. And I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for deliverance right now. I thank you, God, that the spirit of suicide is leaving now. Come here, brother. In the name of Jesus. Isaac, help me right here. In the name of Jesus. No one leave. Come on, everybody pray and everybody stand up. Let's lift our hands. Let's worship Jesus. Let's worship Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're delivered, brother. You're delivered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, let's sing it one more time before we go. Come on, lift those hands. Let's sing it one more time. Let's worship him today. Bless your name. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I know we, we have to get out of here. Number one, on Wednesday night, I'm going to do a teaching in the urgency building, and you need to be there. Because I'm going to talk about God the stabilizer and how God wants to bring stability to your life, balance to your life, Wednesday night. In the next service today, I'm going to show you how you can create a generational revival in your family by God anointing you to be the one who breaks the cycle. You. Look at your neighbor and say, why not you? Why not now? I can't stop praying for y'all. Y'all, y'all are hungry, hungry in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. Father, I thank you for the anointing. I'll tell you why it's dear to me. Just the other day, my own assistant had a brother, 27 years old, had everything going for him. He committed suicide. 27 years old. No one even knew he was suffering because he was suffering in silence. That's the devil. And I'm here to tell you enough is enough. We are a generation that shall live for Jesus Christ. If you can stay the next service, I encourage you to stay because it's going to be powerful. Come here, brother. Come here, brother. Come here, brother. Lift those hands high, man. Lift those hands high. The Holy Ghost is all over you, my brother. The call of God is all over your life. Something is breaking in you right now. And I want you to know it's over, brother. You're getting to the other side of this. Right now, in the name of Jesus, deliverance is all over you. Everybody pray. You're anointed, my brother. The hand of God is on you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. One last time. Let's praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you're here, if you're here today and you say, Bishop, I hear you preaching about Jesus and I hear you talking about Jesus and I'm not serving Jesus right now and I'm honest enough to tell you that I want to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I want to be born again. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a believer. If that's you, raise your hand real high right now. Raise your hand real high all over this building. After this service, I'm going to go to the foyer and I want to shake your hand and I want to give you a gift, a book, a Bible, and some more material. But I want you to meet me out there. But I want to pray this prayer and I want every voice in this sanctuary to repeat after me. Say these words, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me with an unconditional love and I receive that love right now. Your word says, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I would be saved. So right now, I believe with all my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord. Your word also says, when I pray that prayer, old things have passed away and all things have become new. And I am a new creation. I thank you, Jesus, for making me a new creation today. I will live for you. I will serve you. I will read my Bible. I will attend church and I will follow you. From this day forward, I am a believing Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ and my life will never be the same. Now the Bible says when that prayer is prayed by one person, all of heaven rejoices. Let's rejoice with the angels today.